Crews at the Lake of the Ozarks identify the man pulled out of the water this afternoon. Boonville and Columbia light up community meetings tonight with talk of illegal drugs. And helping veterans, she's recognized for her hard work. KOMU 8 News at 10 starts now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at 10. After a day of searching, divers found the body of a man who went missing in the Lake of the Ozarks over the weekend. Good evening, I'm Brittany Peeper. And I'm Jim Rick. Thanks for joining us. KOMU 8's Danielle Carter is live at the Lake of the Ozarks. Danielle, what's the latest? Reporting live, Danielle Carter, KOMU 8 News. Turned out to be a fairly nice afternoon today. More on that forecast coming up for you on KOMU 8 News at 10. The Boonville Police Department is fighting back against illegal drugs, more specifically the fake pot known as K2 spice and bath salts. The concern is the illegal chemical inside. About 30 law enforcement and school administrators met at Boonville City Hall today to hear a presentation about the drugs. In 2011, all synthetic cannabinoids were found illegal at the state level, as were many stimulants like bath salts. At first, researchers thought the drugs were just a novelty and that their popularity might fade away, but many people are are still using them. Synthetic drugs aren't just being talked about in Boonville. The Columbia City Council also discussed synthetic marijuana tonight. A mother spoke out in a public hearing urging Columbia stores to stop selling it. KOMU 8's Gina Cook is live at City Hall. Reporting live in Columbia, Gina Cook, KOMU 8 News. Also at the Columbia City Council meeting, they heard an ordinance tonight that would extend the moratorium on lighted window signs. Last October, the council issued a six-month moratorium on sign permits for flashing and blinking signs. That, that ban prohibited any signs like these from being built or using any sign that was installed after October 1st of 2012. If the ordinance is adopted, it would prohibit new electronic signs regardless of the location. The proposal cites driver safety as the reason for the ban. The extension would last until September 3rd, 2013. Changes are on the way for drivers traveling near the Columbia Mall. A huge project will replace the Stadium Boulevard overpass above I-70. The project is expected to be done by late 2014, creating the first diverging diamond interchange in mid-Missouri. There's already one in Springfield. MoDOT says the interchange can handle heavy amounts of traffic better than the regular diamond interchanges. Lanes of stadium near the overpass will occasionally close starting as early as tonight. The April ballot is only a few weeks away and the push for the 911 sales tax is underway. At today's press conference, city and county officials explained that the 911 call center has not been upgraded for years while the population has grown. Proposition 1 imposes a new 3 eighths of a cent sales tax in Boone County to fund emergency management and joint communications. It would go towards more 911 responders, a new emergency proof building, new software, more staff, including an emergency manager. Uh, opposition of the tax question why the current taxes can't just be reallocated. All improvements would help Boone County be prepared in case of an event like Joplin. Tonight we've confirmed that at least two people who got sick while attending a coroner's conference in Jefferson City have influenza A. Last week, between 20 and 60 people became ill while staying at the Truman Hotel. They experienced a variety of flu-like and respiratory symptoms. The president of the coroner's association was hospitalized but released earlier today. Several others have also gotten better over the weekend. The ache is gone. The fever is gone, but I still have the coughing and the tightness in the chest. Uh, that's what I can't get rid of. The health department will continue to investigate what made the others sick. Grassroot Organizing, also known as GROW, along with Americans for Tax Fairness, gathered in front of the Bank of America today, wanting responses from Senators Roy Blunt and Claire McCaskill about budget proposals. The group opposes the Republican-crafted version of the budget that further cuts federal spending. They favor an approach written by Democratic Senator Patty Murray that focuses on smaller cuts with increases in taxes. Now they want Blunt and McCaskill to respond. We want to see them support putting, putting revenue in the budget, not supporting any kind of cuts. We need to put revenue in the budget 
They already let these sequestration, sequestration cuts happen and didn't do anything about them. We're asking them to put money back in there and quit cutting our economy. We reached out to both Blunt and McCaskill's offices, but they did not comment. McCaskill and Blunt are scheduled to vote next week. Royal police are investigating the death of a student at Missouri University of Science and Technology. The university says 19-year-old sophomore Caitlin Brown was found dead in her dorm room Saturday morning. The cause of the death has not been released. An autopsy is planned for tomorrow. Police are involved because there were some circumstances surrounding the death that the university says they're not comfortable with. A man lost two legs today in Kansas City after falling into a tire shredder at a recycling center. The victim was helping with maintenance on the machine when it happened. The condition of the man is unknown. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, is investigating that accident. When we come back, we'll tell you the story of one woman whose work helping veterans got her recognized. Recently, Job Point awarded one Columbia woman with an honor she didn't expect. Melanie Bolton received a Job Point Award of Excellence for her work helping veterans. Here is a Sarah story with former KOMU reporter and anchor Sarah Hill, who is now with Veterans United. That was Sarah Hill and Scott Schaefer of Veterans United Network. If you would like more information on how Job Point is putting people to work, visit jobpointmo.org. And coming up, some chillier air moving into central Missouri, along with a slight chance of a little overnight snow tomorrow night. We'll check it next on KOMU 8 News at 10. You know what this means? Phil got it wrong. <laughs> oh, yes, that dreaded groundhog. He right? got it wrong back there in, in early February. I think I read somewhere today he was beheaded for that. <laughs> a UCF student plans an attack on the university, but killed himself before carrying out the plan. We'll have why he did it coming up in just a bit. The first year lottery numbers, good luck. A trial is underway in Philadelphia for a doctor who allegedly performed late-term abortions on at least 200 women. It wasn't until a woman died in 2009 after being given too much anesthesia that Dr. Kermit Gosnell was caught. Prosecutors say he ran the clinic for 31 years and performed abortions after women were past 24 weeks, which is illegal. The FBI and police say 47 fetuses were found in freezers on the property, but Gosnell told, uh, his attorney told jurors that because of a dispute with the hazmat team responsible for getting rid of them. A fire alarm caused 500 students to evacuate from a dorm at the University of Central Florida in Orlando early this morning. But there was no fire. It was the scene of an investigation after the suicide of a student and the discovery of guns and explosives in his room. The student had plans for an attack but took his own life before he carried them out. The deceased gunman was identified as a 30-year-old business major. Hundreds of rounds of ammunition and multiple guns were found in his room. FBI agents found crucial clues today about a fortune of stolen art taken more than 20 years ago. The paintings were taken from Boston's Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in 1990. The stolen goods are worth up to half a billion dollars. If you happen to know where they are, the museum is offering a $5 million reward. In international news, Cyprus is planning on taking 10% from each savings account to pay for the $13 billion European Union bailout. People rushed to their cash machines after word spread of the government's plan. Ahead of Tuesday's vote, the president of Cyprus held a crisis meeting exploring ways to soften the blow for the shell-shocked citizens. Bolivian authorities have announced the arrest of at least a dozen alleged drug traffickers in the city of Santa Cruz. The arrest came during a series of 28 operations conducted across the city by anti-narcotic forces. In addition to the arrest, local media reports at least nine vehicles and various firearms were seized during the operation, along with cash and drugs. The Tigers will tip off their first game of the NCAA tournament Thursday night. Up next in sports, how more about Mizzou's opening opponent. A zoo in eastern Indonesia welcomed seven Komodo dragon babies born from eggs from two female adults. The zoo artificially incubated the eggs in the hope that they would have a better chance of survival. Adult lizards eat eggs of their own species. The babies weigh about five to six ounces, but they'll grow to be 10 feet long and weigh 220 pounds. 
Coming up on KOMU 8 News today, Columbia College will host a panel discussion tomorrow afternoon to talk about pending legislation in Congress that would change deductions for charitable contributions. And more talk about the 911 sales tax increase at the Boone County Club.